Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear friends and colleagues, the question of the impact of uh, human trafficking on the dignity of people was exactly stressed by the 1949 United Nations Convention. I quote, prostitution and the accompanying evil of the traffic in person are incompatible with the dignity and worth of the human person. But 67 years after, the international community took a stand against human trafficking, which is anonymously condemned. Meanwhile, in 2016, today, millions of people are being treated as common goods. Sexual exploitation, forced labor, and organ traffic are today, more than ever, a very lucrative business under the control of the transnational organized crime. Violence, vulnerability, and venality are a daily reality for a growing number of people. And nobody could contradict Pope Francis when last year, here, he has described human trafficking as a crime against humanity. In all countries, where the rule of law is a supreme value, judges and prosecutors must mobilize because for them, the traffic in human beings is above all a crime. For all magistrates worldwide, fighting the crime is central for their mission. In my country, where the public prosecution is born from the 14th century, the king fits judge and prosecutors a major objective, that of defending the widow and the orphan. The mission of modern judge remains this, protect the victims and punish criminals. Today, these victims are mostly from the most fragile communities. In several European countries, for example, the Roma minority is overrepresented in the sexual exploitation. In India, 65% of prostitutes are coming from poor backgrounds and often from the lower caste. In New Zealand, the majority of child prostitutes is Maori. By exploiting the most vulnerable women, human trafficking perpetuates inequalities between men and women and violence against women in general. In this context, we cannot speak of a free choice of exploitation. We cannot continue to close our eyes. We cannot hear the voice of the most vulnerable. What is the commitment of governments and societies who face this problem? Yet, a new threat increases the task of the judge. We must now take into account the digital space and need them for traffickers. Indisputably, the idea of internet freedom, or at least the illusion of it, creates the ideal environment for organization offering prostitution on websites which puts vulnerable users at risk. Social media networks have increased the frequency of this phenomenon, and they are the perfect platforms to seek out future victims by making them feel at ease by fostering the trust over time. The internet's assurance of relative anonymity is ephemeral exchanges and its global character have encouraged procurers and various criminal networks to resort to the most discreet means of developing their illegal activities. In addition, users can perceive their online relation to these criminals as harmless or completely safe. The criminal is a friend because before he becomes an enemy. The judge, naturally, has an important role to play in the fight against this denial of dignity. To live up to this ambition, the judge needs three main weapons. Deep knowledge of the realities of the crime he's fighting, effective laws, and an unwavering commitment to implement them. Data about human trafficking are strategic, and this information can be found only by those who really seek it's the role of NBA's observatories of this crime, but they still remain largely inadequate. Laws are essential, but how not to worry to see reaper in our legal arsenal offenses like slavery or servitude, which we thought belonged to the past. Commitment to fight such a crime is not a doubt, but how not to see the cost and the considerable length of necessarily transnational investigations against the power and insolence of organized crime, against the indifference of the public, and dealing with his modest means, the judge, who fight against trafficking is sometimes very lonely because his crime reports too much money for traffickers. So they do take precautions that greatly complicate the task of the judge, which itself is held in strict compliance with laws. How indeed 
compete on equal terms against opponents who know no geographic, judicial, or political borders. We cynically use new technology to evade radar of law enforcement. We use intimidation to silence the victims. Of course, states have committed themselves to fight in accordance with international treaties. The 2000 United Nations Protocol, as well as the 2005 Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Human Trafficking, which urged states to adopt relevant measures. The main added value in my point of view of the convention is its human rights perspective and focus on victim protection. Its preamble defines trafficking in human beings as a violation of human rights and an offense to the dignity and integrity of the human being. But considering the constant progress of the criminal profits of traffickers and the growing number of people sold worldwide, we have to admit that this provision remained mainly dead letter. In a 2014, a study conducted by European Parliament shows that the vulnerable condition represents the characteristic of the exploitation. Most of the victims are migrants or representative of ethnic minorities. The judge, like any citizen of our world, can only see the extent of the challenge. In every year, nearly 500 convictions are handed down by French courts for this type of crime, with 50 international networks dismantled. But we are still far from reducing seriously this intolerable violation of the dignity. But in my country, as in Sweden, in Norway, in Iceland, in Canada, significant advances have recently been made towards a better defense of human dignity with a very comprehensive legal approach. After years of very, very intense debate, a law was recently adopted by the French Parliament. This law was passed April 13, 2016, and raises many hopes for all those who reject the inevitability of seeing human person reduced to a marketable project. Its key points show that its aim is global and concerned both the victim, the trafficker, the client, and the public opinion. Eight main provisions must be noted. The first one is creation within each French county of a bodily council responsible for organizing and coordinating action for the victims of prostitution and human trafficking. The second is given rights for any victim to benefit from protection and assistance in the system. The third is the creation within the state budget of a fund for prevention of prostitution and for the social and professional support of prostitute people. The fourth is the issue of a temporary residence permit for a period of six months for foreigners engaged in path to exist prostitution. In my country, more than 18, 18 19% of the prostitution people are coming from abroad. The fifth point is a repeal, the dismiss, the suppression of offense of solicitation. Victim of human trafficking are victims and no uh, criminals. The sixth point is the obligation for internet providers to block access to site hosters abroad that violate French law against pimping and human trafficking. The seventh point is using, soliciting, accepting, or obtaining sexual relation with a person engaged in prostitution is liable to a fine of fifth degree offense and criminal records. The eight points is integrating the fight against the commodification of the body among the topics taught during schooling. Maybe it's the main point. Parliamentarians beyond partisan affiliation were aware of a major consideration. The business market aspect of human trafficking is generally underestimated, especially considering that the globalization of the exploitation trade is still expanding. We can't forget the United Nations Blue Heart Campaign against human trafficking stress that 25 million people are trafficked each year with an estimate profit of 32 billion US dollar profit. We can't forget that human trafficking is linked to corruption and the injection of criminal assets in the legal economy and poses another threat for our common values. A false dignity of human person implies to combine preventive, repressive, and social oppressions. There are, however, solutions 
as shown by an experiment conducted in France in cooperation with Balkan countries. A communitarian perspective has emerged to meet unmet needs. The elite of uh, immigrant uh, association meet the NGO of France to, uh, uh, on a community-based association and to seek support from outside the community. This new approach recognized the values of the migrant community in the host country and led to the birth of numerous projects in initiative by association of migrant communities and especially its leaders. Meanwhile, the judge's legitimacy is its compliance with laws. Obviously, he cannot succeed alone, but without him, the, fine, the fight cannot be won. Here, no doubt, lies one of the key to success in the fight against human trafficking, strengthening international cooperation actions. A state that is motivated to fight against the human trafficking via bilateral cooperation cannot expect to do so the way it wants, with whoever he wants, and against whatever he wants. The state must, before any cooperation takes place, identify the subject of the cooperation and the partners included in the bilateral cooperation. Following this, it should define the boundaries of cooperation so that it functions effectively. The relinquishing of state sovereignty implied in bilateral cooperation is the main obstacle. Criminal law is very connected to its territory and states are not willing to abandon this in order to have a common area of criminal law. Furthermore, bilateral cooperation is a difficult procedure to put into action in terms of cost and time. Some other obstacles include the conflict between legal systems in cooperating countries and the high rate of corruption in countries where sex trafficking is common. Nevertheless, when bilateral cooperation is put into action, it works effectively and allows for the dismantling of sex trafficking networks. All this action and legislative changes are essential, but how today and here? Do not think about the warning of the gospel according to St. Matthew, for a tree is recognized by its fruits. Look at good fruits. In my opinion, obviously, beyond this professional skills, the judge in this area may draw in a profound way on the free theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Thank you. Thank you very much.